Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Farthest Frontier. Now, previously we had just founded our new colony of swords and set up some of the basics for hunting, fishing, and foraging, as well as adding several homes and getting some resource production up and running. Today, I'm hoping to grow our population as much as possible, allowing us to reach the second tier of buildings, begin farming, and set up a defensive perimeter around the settlement to protect everything. Now before we continue, remember if you want to see more from this series, please do consider leaving a like, maybe a comment on what you'd like to see or what you like about the game. And maybe if you're feeling really nice, you could even subscribe. I never really asked people to do that, but I did in the last episode and gosh darn, there was a hell of a spike. So thank you so much for all of the support. Alright, let's jump into things. So just to get you re familiar with what's going on, we were building several new homes out here with a big housing expansion in our sort of residential district. And just to re-familiarize you with the entire map and layout of this city before we move up the game speed again. We have our town center here, right in the center of town. We then, to the left of it, have the sort of residential district. It's all just homes here. And then on the right side of things, we have mostly resource production and storage. Further down, we have our lake, where we've got some fishing going on right now. And then over on the left side of things, we have a hunter cabin and also a foraging hut to find some berries, willow, whatever we might need, herbs. That sort of thing. So that's basically everything. We have our boy, Sertorius, here. Stealing the show. There were some comments in the last episode about him saving the life of... Was it Jenna, I think? She's our wood splitter, actually. We'll see her. Janya. Close, close. Um, that was awesome. People say maybe raise a shrine to Sertorius or something, which we could do. There are shrines in the game, so we might do that. As he's um, whittling away at the deer out there. Alright, so... Basically, that's us re-familiarized. Let's speed up the game now. I've got some plans. Actually, speaking of comments, another great comment actually mentioned the fact that these houses are built slightly too close to the industry, hurting their desirability. So we can see that these ones are on 5, 7, and then a huge bump up right after that in terms of percentage for desirability. And that's true. I must not have fully noticed how close I was building them because you do get a red outline on the houses that are going to be affected if they're in reach so what I'm going to be doing is pushing this industry just a little bit further out to the right which is relatively easy to do and you don't need any new materials or anything for it you just need time to actually get it built and then the great thing is there are some industry buildings that actually don't hurt desi um, desirabilities and we can kind of fill that gap with those instead so because of that what I'm going to be doing is, just really quickly, let's just get rid of... This is all scheduled to be harvested. I'm going to say no for now. I know that I'm going to push the industry out here, so we're going to harvest this area first. And then later, we're going to harvest and clear this entire area out here to build a big farm, as that's where we have really great fertility. Okay, so just another recap. We have currently 25 population living here. We've just expanded our houses to allow us to basically grow to double that. So we should attract new immigrants and also increase the birth rate and things like that by having that room to expand. If you only ever have as many houses as you have population, the chances of new people arriving is going to go down. You'll still get kind of groups and events and things like that that might want to come in and people are still going to be having kids, but it will sort of taper off. If you want to grow your population, build more houses than you need. Significantly more. Remember, four people can live in a house. And essentially, you want it to be two, like a mother, father, and a couple of kids. That's kind of what you want. You don't want just four adults all like shoved into, crammed into a house together. You want to have that room for expansion if you want to grow. I learned that the hard way. The first time playing this game, I kind of just had one extra house. And we must it must have taken seven hours for me to get to like 40 people or something. It was crazy. Anyway, at least we've uh, learned from our mistakes. So, we can also just check really quickly. We've got 16 current laborers, and four of them can be builders at the moment. And then we have our various other jobs here in the center. So there's a bunch of stuff we want to build. We have tons of logs and firewood, lots of resources, so we're ready to expand. There's an impending heat wave. The winds have died down, and a period of sweltering heat has set in. That could last for weeks. Ensure your town has adequate water supply, as villagers will need to draw more water from wells. Crops may be damaged, especially those sensitive to heat. So yeah, we can basically check that kind of stuff up here. It says warm temperature, light breeze. Maybe the next month it might go up higher, or maybe we've already passed it, I'm not sure. But you can always check this for the actual temperature, which does fluctuate month to month, uh, depending. And you can get freezing cold snaps where it's deadly cold and people literally cannot leave their homes, frostpunk style. Uh, looks like this road in this area is now clear, looking good. The road does look a bit finicky here, so I'm just going to be a little bit persnickety and get rid of it. And we'll put a new one down as we're redesigning this area just a little bit all right so something like that can look a bit better and then we'll join oops we'll join this area down here back over all right cool so they have a build order to move that we want to move the cart out to that area because the cart is our sort of mobile construction platform in a way 
Currently, it is holding uh, 86 logs and 110 stone. And if we just keep loading that up and moving it around, when we want to build this wall later on, we can just bring it to every section of the wall, and they don't have to travel too far and back to get the logs set up. Because it's three logs for every single grid square of wall, so it's a lot. You're going to need a lot if you want to build a nice big wall around this place. Uh, and I think that's a good way of mitigating the time it takes to do it. Okay, so we're basically there now. We've cleared a big area. I'm going to move the stockyard first. So you just click up here in the top right. It says relocate building location. Don't destroy the building and then build it again. That takes way longer. If you actually click relocate, it keeps the materials that are inside of it. Not all buildings can do that, but most of them can, I think. Uh, so this is a good one to do it. We'll just rotate it that way. Leaving a little bit of a gap next to the graveyard so we can build a road adjacent to it as well. And then when that's moved, I'm going to put this storehouse. So this is the storehouse, right? It stores everything except for, like, kind of construction material and stuff. It's more about goods that are produced. Whereas this one is more about construction materials and things that you need to actually do stuff. So logs and things will get stored there. So this would be great for the logging industry out this way. And we'll push this away, raising the desirability back from 5% up to hopefully about 18, 20. And eventually 30%, which is what we need these houses to upgrade. And that will make people a lot happier. Now, while that's all going on, I'm going to put in another build order out this way. I know that population is going to expand, so we want to kind of get even more food in the long run. So let's just... I need to get out of the habit of, um, on, of pausing time, really. Let's go another hunter cabin. I'm actually going to do something kind of unusual and put it down in the same area. Because I was looking around, and it does seem like... You can only have one person working each building, and there's like a big patch of deer down here. One, two, three, four, five, at least that I can see. And I think there was another one up here somewhere. When you hover the... Bring the circle around. Yeah, there, it says there's some out here. So we're just going to have one go over there and one go down here. And they should have the area covered. And then for the forager, the reason I want two close to each other is because there's a bunch of willow and different things here. And then there's loads of... Actually, this is a great example. The berry bushes can be relocated also. So we want to relocate these berry bushes when they're actually ripe and ready to go. So they'll be harvested at the same time. I think there was one down by the river here. Or the lake. Now, you can't do that for every bush. I think it's only the blueberry bushes that can do it. But maybe there's other things. Because other things are like hawthorn and stuff. They have like little, you know, branches and everything or trunks. So they can't necessarily be relocated that easy. But the bushes can kind of be scooped up and moved. So again, putting that next to the foragers keeps it, you know, makes everything really quickly to move. But then others I want to get, I want to get willow so we can start making baskets. And then we'll actually see our villagers carrying around little baskets on their backs, able to carry a lot more stuff. One of the things I really like about the game, actually, is just the attention to detail. Um, because if you actually look at things, you can see, for instance, in the stockyard here, we can actually see, like, there's a bunch of logs, there's some planks, there's some cut stone. And that's exactly what we have here. And if it's empty, it's empty. You know, it actually shows you what's going to go in the building. We've got a pile of gold just sitting out of the storehouse here. Um, you know, ready to be absolutely ransacked. But, you know, we can see it, which is nice. I just think it's a good detail. You can kind of get that visual feedback straight away. So we'll just put this building sideways right along here. I'm going to stick another well. Maybe right here. Not the best for water, but it'll help if industry buildings catch on fire. People just run over to it and douse out the flames, hopefully. Excuse me. All right, so that's coming along nicely. And then we've got our sawmill, our firewood. And then what we're going to want to do is get to level two and build stuff like the compost and tannery and things like that. So we'll start moving that soon enough. So the hawthorn is ripe now. It's ready to go. We're on late summer, year three. Six months of food in the bank. A month of it could possibly go off in the next 12 months. And we're on times two speed. We've got our next two buildings on the way. Really hoping we get more people coming in soon. Because we have all these houses just waiting to be filled. And remember, we have our market. And our grocer, Sigland, is kind of running around gathering stuff. He's actually unable to work. He's got nothing to do right now. He needs more houses to be filled. But he's going to then load them all up with stuff like firewood and their food. And then he'll kind of collect the taxes for the, being the guy that did that. Um, and that's why our gold is up to 82. We're making 12 per month right now. Which is pretty good. Um, I think the doctor that we want to get later on, when people start getting sick, is like 30 upkeep of gold per month. Hey, I just noticed that... Oh, yeah, sorry. Our gold went away there temporarily. It's because we're relocating the building. But it should just pop up in, in place. 
Hey, there we go. Two new villagers have immigrated. So what we immigrated, what we want is 30. 30 is going to allow us to actually upgrade the town center. And then we need 40 planks and 25 stone. Of course, we have plenty of that, so we're fine. All right, good. Now with that area clear, what we can basically do is take the sawmill. Relocate this maybe... Should we turn sideways? I reckon turn sideways like that. Leave a bit of a gap for a road in between. And then we'll take the fire splitter. Firewood splitter. And it should fit nicely next to it. Yeah, there we go. Nice and even. And that frees up this area then for things that don't affect desirability. And that should raise the desirability of these houses by pushing it just that little bit further out. Alright, great. 27 out of 48. 26 people are fit to work. Just means we probably have a, a, either one of the children or the senior or something can't work. If it was like Frostpunk, we'd be pass passing some laws and sen sending those kids down the mines. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's not that hard to tell a kid just to hold a fishing rod for a couple of hours, right? <laughs> Autumn is lovely, isn't it? It's very cozy right now. Not a problem in the world. Not a care in the world these people have. And, and in fact, they're actually super happy. Everyone's ecstatic. They're as happy as can be. Everyone's got everything they need. Shoes, clothes, you name it. <laughs> even full entertainment value, which I don't even know how that's possible. I guess they just keep entertaining themselves. But I think as we grow in population, then these demands start to kick in. When they get a little bit bored. Alright, good. We've got our two houses there. Or our two uh, production buildings. So just extend this road out like so. Something like that. Okay, let's check desirability. There we go. The house is back up to 17, 18, and so on and so forth. They might get 1 or 2% from like little trees and little, you know, different positioning of things. But we're going to put down a school, hopefully in the future, and then a pub, and some extra houses and stuff. And then all the decorations that can go in between. So what we want to do now is commission a build order to just harvest everything in this area here. Clear out that space. And then after that, while, well, while they're doing that, we're going to start moving the cart towards the farms that we're going to build. We're going to build farms down here. And I need to update the uh, location the radius for the forager shack. So we want to be grabbing that willow. And then this other one down here is kind of grabbing the greens and vegetables and stuff down this way. Then we've got our hunter cabin. It's going to be hunting the deer down this way. And the other hunter cabin is going to hunt the deer up this way. And who's our second hunter? Ciro. That's a cool name. Or Cairo. Ciro? I'll go with Ciro. And then of course we have Sertorius, Ervalt, and Arald are the uh, gatherers. Looking good so far. Very quaint, little pleasant little town. Alright, let's just keep time moving. So we're coming up to winter. The farm could take, I don't know how long, but like it could take multiple years to set up. And once it's up and running, then we should be able to sustain the larger population we're trying to attract. I like adding some of the curved roads in now and then as well. It just makes, it breaks things up, makes it look a bit more organic, a bit more natural. People who've been watching my Anno series know I'm a big fan of that. I try to build off-grid when I can. Um, granted, I think the optimal thing to do most of the time is build in a grid, but off-grid can sometimes allow you to then to put the decorations in between houses and also just break things up and make it look a little less monotonous. But as we get more and more built up as time goes, we can shift and relocate buildings and make them a bit more compact. So, for the logs, we're going to need quite a lot of uh, planks. I'm going to add another job to that. So we now have Tommen, Heldon, and Lam are all working on logs. And Janya, of course, is still our log splitter. Two new villagers. All right, we're one away from being able to upgrade the town center and getting some tier two buildings unlocked. I think actually if I clicked that, it would have told me specifically what they are. Uh, in terms of their age and stuff. And we have a nice little production screen here that we can kind of check out. So this is the food that we're producing. The green line is how much we're producing. Consuming is the blue. And then obviously spoiled will be orange. So you kind of want to keep green, obviously just a little bit ahead of blue, but not too much. Otherwise, spoilage is going to go a bit crazy. Uh, you can also export food, I suppose, by selling it through the market. And that'll be a tier two building. We've then got, what is this? This is just obviously then the resource goods and materials production. And then we have villager info which is what I was trying to check there. So we've got 12 in terms of growth and decline, zero. We don't count. I guess it was Amara who died, but that is putting, that is me one off the target population I needed to get our town center built because she is lying in the grave. 
13 berries spoiled. I think we can get over that. 13. <laughs> I love the idea of keeping track of that. It's like 13 little berries. It's like, oh, I was planning on eating those. They, they've rotted. So there's actually up here at the farm a clay deposit here with not very much in it. So I might try and leave that clear and make that our first deposit. We'll harvest all of that clay first and then we can go for the bigger ones that are further out. Um, that seems to make sense to me. All right, it's winter. So when it's winter, we actually cannot start making the farm. They don't work on tilling the land because the soil is too hard, I suppose. But what we can do is at least clear the area. So we know that this is the fertile area that we want. So we'll just clear this rough area here. The cart is already here. So everyone's just going to run over this way and load up the cart with all this stuff. And we've already got 74 and 111 in there. It's actually got some willow in there, interestingly. Let's tell that not to be stored in here anymore. But they'll pick it up if they need it. Alright, what kind of winter are we at? Deadly cold temperatures. This is what I was talking about. Everyone's gone back home. Seeking shelter. Absolute mad lad running outside right now. Who's that? Bethany. Alright, we're back out. I am on triple speed. Like I said, I just want to grow. The population is slow to grow. And I just want to get more and more people in. Get that town center upgraded. And start getting some new building chains to mess with. Uh, but we do have almost time to do it. But I guess one thing at a time. We want to clear this area first before we get building anything else. Because it's all the same demographics that do it. The same professions. We've all got their big winter coats on. We have to start making coats and shoes next, actually. A tannery and a cobbler is going to be what does that for us. And th that's the reason I actually have another hunter. Because having a cobbler's and having a tannery, you need a lot of hides. And, uh, yeah, hides, I guess. Animal skin hides. Uh, in order to make all those things. So you can end up, like... Basically having a shortfall just because you're not hunting enough meat. You can always trade for it though, I suppose. You have to kind of specialize in something that you end up trading for something else. And the way the game is actually laid out, you'll have to um, trade for heavy tools. You can't actually ever make your own stuff. The building chains are really strange. It essentially doesn't want you to get to tier 3 without having to trade for some stuff to move up. You'll have access to things like an iron mine, but you won't be able to smelt it. You'll also have access to things that can even use smelted iron, um, but you just won't be able to smelt it yourself. Alright, we got two new villagers immigrated, and we're at just hitting year 4. Alright, so with that, it means we can now upgrade this building, and reaching tier 2 will give us access to a bunch of new buildings. So we'll just click upgrade, 40 wood planks, 25 stone. And we can start laying out our other buildings. So what are we going to need? A cobbler. We'll need the basket maker as well because we're getting willow. So we should be able to get this stuff pretty soon. So let's see. Do we have a cobbler in here? So the tannery has pretty bad desirability. So I might stick that down here. Does it fit? It actually does fit. And it's pretty far away. So that's going to be our tannery. We need a fletcher building. Oh, yeah. Let's do fletching at the back of this. That doesn't hurt desirability. So pop it right there. Yearly taxes are collected stock food stocks are low don't worry about that we'll be fine um what else the cobblers so that's going to be here cobbler shop they use hides to make shoes that will enable villagers to walk faster and avoid injury while working the building is on fire they'll figure it out they'll figure it out i've no doubt so this fits in here nicely as well it doesn't affect desirability so I might as well just slam it in there it's actually working out really nicely and what about this? I think this is the same size as the stockyard. Yeah, the compost. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. It's fitting almost too well. And then we need the basket maker. There we go. A workshop where basket makers will uh, will use willow to make new baskets for workers. Baskets increase the efficiency of your villagers by allowing them to carry more. This also doesn't hurt, hurt desirability. We could tuck it in that way, but we'll make it a bit more even. We'll just have it lengthways. Maybe like this. Could have two of them next to each other, depending on the volume we need in the future. That's a nice little industrial area. That's really, really nice, actually, how compact it's looking. I think that'll look good. All next to the two storage buildings as well, and the town center. And then maybe the market could go here, the trader. That would make sense. And I think it actually houses like to be next to it. So that could work out very well indeed. Okay. So this isn't loaded up with planks. No, it's just got the raw wood. And I think they've harvested basically everything here. Almost everything. So, we might as well start laying out the farm. We're just hitting spring. Uh, so things are going to get interesting now. So this farm, the bigger we make it... It's hard to see with the tooltip. It says the field size 11 by 9. Workers 5. So really, I kind of want 3 workers on the farm. 
So something around 3 and 8x8 eight eight might be good. It's a kind of a large area for 3 people though. But I think a 7x7 seven seven is a really large area for just 2. So that's why I think 8x8 eight eight will probably be good early on. And this is a pretty fertile patch. And then you can actually expand the farm later, really naturally, without having to destroy it or anything. Um, it looks like soil mixture is pretty bad. It's really heavy clay rather than any sand. So finding a sand mine might be an ideal situation. So I'm, I'm happy with this. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I just want to push it back one. We'll make it 8x8. Eight eight. And then when we clear that clay deposit, we can then um, extend or make this bigger or smaller or whatever. So 3,000 manpower is needed. It's going to be a big project. It's going to take a couple of years to do that. But we do have three farmers on it, at least, not just two. And who's going to be our farmers? So three out of three. We can check them out this way. Dima. She's on her way. Get tilling that land. So you have to kind of dig up all the weeds and flatten it and everything and just make it as good as possible for propagation. Uh, we've got tons of wood and stone. Might get building that wall soon. I guess we could come down here, actually, because there is some stuff that needs to go in this way, too. Alright, cool. And some pretty pretty tumultuous weather right now. We're up to 31 population, though. This town center is almost done. And that'll give us access to nicer decorations as well. We already have tier 1 decorations. This one's really good, actually, I think. The medium plaza. We'll probably put that down next to the market. If there's a gap there. I think there is. That's kind of why we were clearing out that area. Blueberry bush. We can move that bush. Bring it over to the other ones. And then the desirability should shoot up. So I'm going to toggle this button in the very top right of the UI. It says automatic building upgrades are enabled. I'm going to just click that to turn that off. Once we reach tier 2, houses will automatically try to move up a level. Once they reach 30% desirability and they have a stockpile of two different types of food. And we really don't want that early on. There's no need. Everyone's super happy. As far as I know, houses that upgrade just make, it, uh, make them more happy says here happiness bonus and increased durability so if we're at max happiness you don't really need them to level up another bit it doesn't give any more space i don't think and i don't think it gives you any more taxes so there's just no need for that just yet but this we wanted to hit level two looking good uh just so we can have access to all these different types of buildings so the main one now is going to be yeah, so we can have a healer's house at tier 2, a trading post, so that's going to be really vital for traders to come by and uh, let us sell off our gold and use our gold to buy different things or whatever, and also sell off our excess. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Um, so how big is this building? It's quite big, and it's got an interesting kind of layout. It can have two entry points at the corners there. Yeah, I might tuck it into the side here, so it's just not quite, and is it, what's its desirability, I guess? No desirability. The healer's house has positive desirability, so we might put that somewhere out towards the the houses out there. And then also the school. Yeah, so we want to educate our kids. And then we have a pretty big radius for that, actually. Actually, it could fit even right next to the market at some point, like right there. Oh, it has to go sideways if you want to. Anyway, we'll figure all that out soon. No, no point getting that just yet. It's a bit too advanced for me. Uh, and the pub as well. And then the rat catcher. That helps really with wheat and grains and things. Not na that necessarily for the size we're at just yet. So let's um go with the trading post. We need 35 planks and 10 wood. I just want to see as well, really quickly, do we need anything else? Ah, yes, the wagon shop. Super important building, actually. And that unlocks a bunch of other ones for us. So the wagon shop could maybe fit in somewhere here as well. Or maybe down here, actually. Yeah, it'd be perfect down here. I think I'll go with that next. And then the trader. So we don't have much to sell off to the trader right now anyway. And I just want to double check. No desirability penalty? No. Good. Alright, so the wagon shop, now that that's kind of going to be under construction, it's a workshop where transport wagons are manufactured. So it's a little misleading. I got a little tripped up the first time I played with this as well. And I'll explain why. Wagons can be used by villagers to quickly transport goods from one place to another, increasing the efficiency of building, farming, and resource harvesting. So it says it requires planks and it produces wagons. Pretty straightforward. Now, unlike something like the basket weaver, which takes in willow and produces baskets, every person will carry a basket if they can. New villager is immigrated, nice, named Charik, and a new villager has been born, named Eslana. So unlike baskets where every villager can possibly take one, not every villager can take a wagon. In fact, it's more like a warehouse that stores two wagons and two people can work it and use the wagons to go back and forth between places. So that's what that building is. I thought at first it was like the little carts people, like a wheelbarrow, you know, because it looks like 
Actually, sorry, that's not it, even it. But it looks like that on the icon when it says they produce it. I can't see it until we get it. Um, I guess we can see it here in the tooltip. So it looks like a little wagon, yeah, on the pr production icon. So I was like, oh, everyone's going to be pushing around little things. But no, it turns out you can only have two, and it takes a bunch of planks to make even one, and then they automatically will decide where they need to go with various things. So that's how that building works. And obviously we'll see it a bit more later on. So we're about not even 20%, about 20% into this. It was at 3,000, we're at 2,500 points now. So we've chipped away 500. They're just clearing it out. You can see where they're getting rid of all that tall grass. They're doing their thing. That'll be ready next year. <laughs> and then we can start planting it and then the year after. So it's going to be a while before we get stuff from there. So it's good. We have eight months of food ready. We have our root cellar down here, which is storing our food. Our smoker, obviously preserving the food as well. Smoking both fish and meat. Using the firewood to do that. And we're very low on planks. We've got three people in there cutting wood. One person shelter stocking. So we've just got a new immigrant. So we'll just put them on... Um, so everyone on planks as well, because we just have a lot of plank production to go. So we've just added all of these buildings. Let's take a moment to soak them in. So we have here our basket shop. We're going to be turning two willow into one basket, and that's going to, you'll see it being equipped by people and they'll carry stuff around. I assume over time they sort of break, or you need new ones. I assume that's what happens. I think it happens with clothes as well. Then we have our Fletcher building now. And that's going to be to help our hunters. So they're going to be making arrows and bows just out of wooden logs. So again, big log production is what's needed all the time here. We then have our cobbler shop next to it, making shoes out of animal hides or pelts. Over this way, we now have our tannery, making clothes based on pelts and water. So it's a good thing we put the water down. Actually, I didn't realize it requires that straight away. And then our compost, which is now someone's job. It's Charik. <laughs> He's actually the newest person to the colony. You're on shit shoveling duty basically he's going around to the houses collecting waste and when we get 3600 waste then it becomes I th well actually sorry that's not correct but when this fills up to 100 percent that'll be then ready to be used as fertilizer for the farm so it's, again that's years away before we're going to get that um but it's cool i love the way this has gone together it really looks like it's one just building together you know looks really good just coincidental layout really i didn't quite plan it looking good though it's all fitting very neatly together our, our bustling Densely packed industry. Um, so let's check our professions. Now we've opened up all these jobs. We're down to just nine free laborers, and four of them could be potential builders. One of them's building right now. And of course, we're going to start putting down that wall fairly soon. And we've got three people out on the farms working away, investing in our future and our children's future, frankly. Okay, money is quite good as well. So yeah, we can start looking at getting that trader down now. I think that'll be the next thing after this building is done. So amenities and services, right? Trading post. The reason I don't want to go with a healer's house is because it is so bloomin' expensive. Oh, this building actually has three potential exit points. Interesting. Yeah, I guess we could do that then. So we can come in that way, this way, and... Did I leave a gap? Let me just see if I left a gap. Actually didn't. Let's just move it over real quickly. Yeah, and then here, maybe we can put, like, decorations and gardens or something. That way the houses get more desirability. All right, nice. We'll just cut across there. Sweet. We can also start laying out cobbled roads. So this is, like, a big main road. Probably not going to change, so we'll add a an upgrade to that. And that'll add cobbled roads, so nice, quicker back and forth between these areas. And we could also start exploring out the other way. Make a little fork in the road. Looks kind of cool. I kind of want it to be uneven. Making it dead even looks really weird, almost. Although, I don't know. It's fine. Let's do that. And then we'll just curve it a little bit along the lake. The lakeside lakeside trail. Two more people have arrived. We have just gotten... Uh, we actually don't know the names. It did say the name, but it was just one at a time. So there we go. We have Holo <laughs> and Cariolus. Cariolus. The Cariolus effect? Is it him? Is that the same name? <laughs> All right, sweet. One thing I think would be kind of cool if they had little traits. I mean, maybe things would get too complicated then. And obviously when you've got like hundreds of people, it doesn't really matter anymore, but it's almost for the role play aspect. Some people were talking about like how it's got little elements of RimWorlds. I think very, very, very lightly, but see the people don't really have much of a personality. They've got an age and a job and that's kind of it. It would be kind of nice maybe if they had just a little something. 
to, to riff off of. And, uh, you know, give, give your people some personality, basically. Maybe certain villagers can come in, you know, like, oh, <laughs> extremely fertile. And it's like, oh, higher birth rate with this person. Or you could buy the, you could have the opposite. Um, or, you know, obviously you could have job specializations, but that's when it gets kind of crazy, because obviously the game assigns things itself, so hopefully it would do it correctly, but you'd go mad if you saw someone should be a woodcutter and they weren't actually doing it. But yeah, you could have someone who's strong, maybe they're better at like um, being a laborer, that kind of thing. That'd, that'd be good, I think, for a game like this. I digress. Um, I'm seeing some people mulling around not doing anything, which I don't like to see. So let's tell them to get harvesting out this way as well. So this is where the wall is going to start. Well, just let me double check on that. I suppose there's no harm in clearing this area because that's where more houses are going to go. And then the same up here. So we'll just bring the cart more central to the town. Somewhere like maybe just there. Hopefully they can both start filling that up. So yeah, so the marketplace is here, so we can s shove a little few houses in within the radius down here. You can't move this radius, and then a few more up this way too. And that'll be a pretty dense little district for us. It's been relatively calm. No wolf attacks, bear attacks, touch wood. Um, but everything looks like it's going swimmingly right now. No disease outbreaks or anything. Granted, we're only on year four. Everyone's ecstatic. People are actually really clean and everything. Cleanliness is 100% right now. Just because we're getting rid of that waste, turning it into compost. But obviously, um, as things get more and more dense and urban, we're going to need things like rat catchers to help lower the rat population and the squalor in the town. We have to start thinking about where this, um, this wall is going to go. Now, the walls could be a little finicky. They only really go around roads if they're not curved. So as nice as it is building curved roads, hunters haven't found anything in a while. have to move this then. A bit further out apparently. As nice as curved roads are, and I want to build them just to make things at a glance kind of look nicer, it's not very easy to work with because of that kind of gate situation. Uh, let's put down an exploration thing here, here, and here. Just unmask that area if we can. wonder how our boy Sir Torius is doing. How old is he now? He's 38. He's totally fine. As far as I know, they do age by the year correctly, but apparently kids age faster just to kind of get you to the adult population quicker. Food stocks are low. It does have me slightly concerned, I'm not going to lie, but we are working on that farm. It's already winter, so construction has been halted. They're not going to do any more with it. And then they'll resume it in the spring. Hey, our cobbled road is down. Looking good. A little, um, oddly shaped. Can we flatten this area, actually? Bit of unnecessary. It's kind of unnecessary, I guess, but I don't know. I wanted to look at it. Oh, cool. We have our market is up and running now. Our trader. First trader is on the way. And here they are. So there we go. A traveling merchant has arrived with new goods to trade. So let's check it out. So again, I've scaled the UI to 150%, so it's kind of taking up a lot of the screen here, but we can just quickly look. So Cariolus is our um, trader. He's going to be the guy dealing with the market and stocking it with gold. So you can only trade for things that are actually here. This guy's going to be here for a very long time, though. Scorv the Butcher. So I'm guessing he's going to have meats and stuff for us. Yes, he does. He's got a lot of meat, which is actually good because apparently we're low. Although we do have five months. I think we're fine. Um, and then we can kind of see what's coming in at a good rate or what's not. So basically, this UI, how it works, if it's got a left symbol and a right symbol, that can be bought or sold. Yeah, buying or selling. Whereas if it's only got one to the right, that means the merchant's buying it, but he's not selling it. And vice versa, if it's to the left, he's selling it, but not buying it. And then the corresponding price rates will tell you if you're getting a good deal. So he is selling... What is this, weapons? I don't know why I can't see it. Hang on. It looks like weapons. Yeah, crude weapons. For 29 gold a pop. 29 gold a pop. And apparently... He's trading the commodity at far above average price. So that's actually bad for us, right? We want to be getting it at it. We want to see a red sign next to it to mean like, you know, he's trading it at far below the average price, I assume. And that would be good for us. But 29 for a crude weapon. And then obviously we have to stock this place with gold. We've got 256 and you can transfer it pretty quickly because we're right next to the storage depot that's dealing with it right here. So they don't have to run back and forth. So just as an example, let's transfer in, I don't know, about 200. And you can actually do this, I guess, and just confirm. So then Cariolis should come out, run down here, and then run back wherever he is. 
He's seeking shelter right now because it's a deadly cold winter, so he's not going to be doing anything. And there's been a predator sighted and a building attacked. Oh my god, it's a bear. Hang on one second, guys. This is going to be serious. Ciro, our second hunter, is fighting it hand-to-hand. -hand. Sertorius in the back with the bow and arrow. Laying into it. The two together. Can we both get them to attack? You attack as well. You should have a bow and arrow too. Can we take it down? It's down to... Oh, you missed. It's actually pretty rare that you miss. It'd be a great kill if you could get it. Another bow. Oh, come on, Sertorius. They're both firing. Let's go. One more shot's going out. Boom. Got him. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's just make sure it's in one of their radius, just so they do pick it up. I'm sure they will, but just in case. Alright, great. The bear has been... Thwarted? I guess not really. The bear's plans have been thwarted to steal from our hunting shack. They actually do go for places where there is food stored, which is pretty cool. They'll often try to raid like stuff like the smokehouse or the, uh, the cellar. Oh yeah, and we've got our wagons being made now, so... Brumont is seeking shelter. Obviously, everyone's seeking shelter right now, basically. But he's going to be making the first wagon, and then we should see it going back and forth out to the farm and, and things that are far away. Um, but ultimately, you kind of need these things called temporary shelters that are places where you can basically store food so that if someone's working really far away, they've got a temporary shelter next to them, the wagon will know to stock the shelter with food, and then they're not going to be living there, but they'll just use it as a place to get their food instead of having to run all the way home. Um, but they actually don't live there. Despite it having occupancy, it has like the potential to have people living there. It never gets filled. Anyway, so let's see. So we've told them to transfer gold. Of course, we have to wait until uh, this kind of deadly cold snap uh, passes. And then people should come out of their homes and stock this place with gold. So while we're waiting, uh, we can just look over the food or look over the deals. So he is selling crude weapons, meat, clay, coats. Uh, hides and food, but I don't think we really need anything. I think we're okay What could we sell we could sell herbs for a pretty standard rate average price We could sell some of our tools that we have we've got 15 tools on us that we were given from the start of the game some stone so Yeah, you know as tempting as it is. I just don't really think we need anything weapons will be tempting pretty tempting But it's selling at a high price. So I'm like eh. I think Sir Torius can handle it for now So we'll leave it we stocked it with gold in case we need anything in the future, but for now, I think we're good. Multiple traders can come at the same time, though, so we'll just have to keep an eye on that building. And he's going to be there for the whole year, so if we want to change our mind later, maybe we can change it. Do something else. Alright, looking good. That's going to be year four under wraps, our fifth year. So, now that we're tier two'd out of our minds, I think we can actually start working on clay the clay pit. Yeah, so let's get the clay pit started. Keep it away from the farm there. We can use that for different buildings going forward. Alright, construction is still halted. Now we've got 1,200 to go. So we're about halfway done. Just over halfway done. New village has been born. Excellent. So clay. Let's see what we're going to need that for. Clay can be used to make buildings like the school, I think. So if we go back to amenities and services. Uh, the healer's house needs 20 clay. The school needs 25 clay. So we have to get clay really for the next few buildings. But it also costs 100 gold. And that costs 100 gold as well. So it's going to be a little while before we get those. Don't need the rat catcher or anything else yet. Housing, nothing really there for us. We've got the wagon shop up and running. The granary, don't need it. Love to have a cooper. That makes barrels, which allows you to store and save up food way longer. A 5% modifier. A vault to store our gold. We need uh, iron ingots and stuff. Tier 2, we have a windmill for creating um, flour out of the wheat, but again, we need heavy tools to build that building, so we're going to be looking for a trader to come by that's actually selling heavy tools, and speaking of, another trader has arrived, so let's see, that's what I'll spend my gold on for sure if we come across, so trader, here's the tabs just in the top right, it's kind of tucked away, the second trader is At Atka of the Iron Clan, departing in 45 days, she's not there very long, she's got a lot of smoked fish to sell us though, merchant is trading this commodity at a far below average price, that's pretty good, right? Maybe we could buy some just for the fun of it. Oh, look at this. She's selling weapons, proper weapons, at above the average price. And she's selling... Wow, 237 for one piece of armor or chainmail or whatever. Goddamn. She's buying soap, but we don't have any. At a high, right, at a high price. And also ore, but we don't have any of that either. So there's not much we can do with her, but just for fun. It's a little bit of fun. We'll buy a little bit of smoked fish. 
don't think you got any reputation or relations with these people, but you know, let's just say, yeah, 20 smoked fish, please. Actually, that doesn't work. So we'll just do this. Sometimes I don't know why, but for some reason that doesn't work, always work. Can we get it to 20? Probably not. I don't have the skill to get it to right on the little bit. Does scrolling do it? No. All right, buy, buy in stock or buy in transfer. So do we want to keep it in the market to sell later or do we want to just transfer it? One transfer it. So we'll take in 21 food. It's nothing. It's just a bit of fun. It's a couple months of taxes, basically, just to say, hey, there's how it works. And we made a deal. God, those lightning strikes, man. Okay. It would have been nice if we could sell something. We just don't really have anything to sell yet. Now, the foragers. It's a bit micro-intensive. We can get the willow, which is what I want. But these guys, there's lots of veg out here. Huge amounts of vegetables. So we'll just grab all those if we can. And the willow should be made into baskets. We should start seeing people with baskets. There we go. We can see one right there. So if we click her, we can see this, that Sadina has tools on her and baskets. Now, tools were provided for us. We're not going to get tools again for a long time. And they're going to slowly break and wear off. So we're going to have to eventually try and make our own, obviously, or work to um, trade for them. All right, so I'm moving the cart far out to the, let's just call this west of the settlement, west of the farm. And we're going to start putting, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Farms can actually have their food stolen by animals, right? So you want to build a fence around them. But I think if we build just a big wall around the place, that's just as good. We'll probably build both just to be safe. I'll start exploring just the perimeter here start laying out the uh, the fencing. So the problem with our fencing is going to be that it's going to take so long to build that I need to get this cart up there now. We've probably got some idle villagers, actually. Did we ever tell them to clear this? Yeah, okay, now they're clearing stuff. That's fine. A villager is stricken with dehydration. Air vault has been stricken with dehydration. It's easily managed with a supply of drinking water. Yeah, that's strange. Build shelters near fresh water or wells. Well, there is a well right there. You're really, you're pretty close to it. I'm sure he'll be fine. Rain is increasing water generation by 500%. It's maxed out right now as well. Airwalt is looking a little, little worse for wear. It's always 52. Where are you going, man? He's look at him working away. He's harvesting, even though, Well, sorry about that. I think I think it was an auto save to give me a bit of lag spike there. Can't I tell him to go get your water? I mean, his health is technically okay. And it's raining. All right, anyways, let's start laying out the walls. So we'll just put our first bit of wall down. Walls and roads. Palisade wall. We haven't been raided yet, actually, so that's good. And then, oh my god, is this more... Yeah, it's like more farmland or potential farmland down there. But we can obviously change the wall and expand later on. Holy crap, the amount of willow. Tons of it. Um... Okay, maybe we'll do something... It's going to be hard to get the road to cross this area. Let's do a wall just straight up like that. A little standard wall, and then we can kind of add to it and change it as time goes on. Don't want to build too much at once, because they actually take a really long time to get it built. And they'll try to do it all at the same time, as far as I've seen. Which is fairly annoying. So you want to do it bit by bit, and then having the wagon nearby should allow them to just basically pull from that all the resources they need to do. Like I said, it's three logs per chunk, so... It could take a really long time. Um, we could make this a cobbled road as well, I think. Two more people have come into the town, and another one has been born. We're up to 39. The houses are almost full again. And another impending heat wave. We've got no crops or anything, so I think we'll be okay. But I'm worried about Airwalt. You know? He's 52. There's a heat wave. Don't know if he can handle it. If he doesn't make his way over to that well. Speaking of, uh, we want to also get building a few extra houses. So I think we'll just put them kind of a little bit more grid-like. Just those ones. Gaps around their backs. They should be in range of that market just fine, I think. And then I'm going to increase the desirability. We're going to put down some decorations. I like the plaza quite a lot. We've got the gold for it. And putting it next to the market can look really good, I think. Just make the market look like it's bigger, basically. Uh, maybe not on that side, actually. We don't need to overdo it. Extra houses could fit there and still look all right. So we could tuck them in. Yeah, actually, it's kind of cool. Tuck them in all together, a little cluster. And I think they'll still walk in between, even though there'll be no road. 
Pillager cured. I think Airwalt's gonna be just fine. Dehydration, easily managed. He's just a bit thirsty, a little bit parched is all. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Alright. Hey, there we go. Bits of the wall are coming, coming along nicely. And then we're gonna put down towers for defense and stuff too. Food seems to be good. We've got 10 ahead of us. Four that's gonna be lost. Crops ready for assignment. Here we go. So we're already about a quarter through the year or a third through the year. But here's our farm management screen. So let's just get it some stuff planted now, let time play, and then I can kind of describe what's going on. So we can well actually we could just have a quick look at it. So they've cleared the area. What was it? An eight by eight with three farmers potentially on it. We can't increase it any more than that. Three out of three. Fertility is eighty one percent. That's really, really high. Uh, the weed level is 85% and the rockiness too. So what we can do to reduce that is just work the land. Setting farmers to perform field maintenance instead of growing crops provides a chance to reduce the weed levels and remove rocks. So basically they act as debuffs to the output that you're going to get from, excuse me, planting. God damn, I had a burger before this. <laughs> excuse me. Anyways, so... Putting down the field maintenance is going to basically allow them to reduce the weed level and the rockiness, which acts as debuffs for the final output of what you get. So let's say we were putting down carrots, and we're going to get 1,000. We'd get 81% of 1,000, then minus the kind of modifiers of weeds and rockiness. And it does tell you what the estimated yield will be, so you know. But then obviously, dehydration, you know, uh, storms, animals stealing food, disease, that can all affect it. And every time we plant something, we have different things that have different heat tolerance, frost tolerance, the time it takes to grow, how much weeds it can actually create or suppress, uh, and that kind of thing. The only one that actually raises fertility is clover. So if you want to bring fertility back up, you plant clover. And I can bring it up even higher. If you want to get rid of weeds and rockiness, you go field maintenance. And that's basically it. If you want to add soil mixture to the thing, so let's say we wanted carrots, the ideal area for carrots soil mixture is about here, so we need to add a lot of sand to bring that up. Otherwise, it's just going to be a negative 5 or 10% debuff. It's not crazy, but obviously if you want optimal planting conditions, you want to try and get this green somewhere in the middle for soil mixture is usually pretty good for most crops. But anyway, the only other thing then would be this bar here. You can click and move these things around, and then to get rid of them, you have to click this. It's kind of a little finicky. I kind of wish you could just right-click and get rid of it. It's a bit strange that you have to click a separate button to do it. Also, all sound from the game is just gone for some reason <laughs> while, while time is paused here. Anyway, but long story short, this is our timeline bar. So we're this is where we are, you know, through the 12 months of the year. The last three months of the year, we don't plant or harvest or do anything. There's nothing that can be done. But the first nine... Sorry, I said last 12, didn't I? I mean the last three. The first nine months are open season, so we can do a bunch of stuff. So in year... This is year one. Year two... Um, basically, right after, we'll do this, keep them working on both. I don't know if they'll start that now or not, but we'll see. We'll do another bit of crop maintenance right at the beginning, and then we'll start our first harvest. We'll go with something like this, beans. Let's just move this down a bit. Yeah, so beans. Bean crops yield moderate amounts of dried beans that can be stored longer than other crops. So let's go with that first. And um, it's got good heat tolerance, not great frost tolerance, but we're keeping it well out of the way of winter. You can actually get frost spikes towards the end of the year and at the beginning. So having this right in the middle, I think is a safe, pretty safe bet. So let's just stick it right there. And then obviously there's loads of other things that we could focus on for a long time, but let's just let time play again. We've got our kind of orders now. So they're going to be tilling the land, working for a little bit for the next couple of years, removing rocks, removing weeds, just making it a little bit better. And then doing that again at the beginning of next year. And then we'll just get one crop. That's all. Just one crop, singular. <laughs> and uh, we'll get our beans. The year after, maybe we'll go for a variety. We'll go for turnips and carrots, maybe. So two lots of turnips and carrots. Um, I just messed up there. We'll just stick that back in. That's fine. Do something like this. Carrots in the middle. So what's that going to be? Turnips. Impacts fertility. Negative two. But it can also add fertility. There's a plus and minus five either way. I think that's what that means anyway. Um, same with carrots, right? Carrots. That's carrots there. Turnips. Yeah, it seems to be the same actually. It tends to lower fertility whenever you plant anything. It actually, I think that just might mean it's negative two, but maybe also negative five. I don't know if it can actually gain. I know for sure, though, crop, uh, like, for instance, this is plus five. With a plus and minus five either way, it seems to say after it. It's hard to understand the tooltip perfectly. But if you know, let me know. Uh, and it can kind of help things. But we can always keep an eye on it. And you can actually go all the way back to years gone, and it'll tell you how it all went and what you got. So you're not really left guessing anywhere. Anyway, so I'm just going with a variety of food, just because. Why not? Um, their heat tolerance in the middle of the year 
isn't the best, so that might be a little dangerous putting it at the beginning of the year. So let's just get that out, move that there, and put this at the beginning. Should be a bit safer. All right, cool. So there we go. We've just changed. You can actually see they've just finished something. So weeds have gone down. Rockiness has gone... I think it went down, but it has an up icon next to it. We've got two more villagers that just came in and two more that have just been born. So we're doing good. All right, so the farm's underway. Those three farmers are just going to come back, keep doing this. So we'll just keep track of it. 57%. Remember that. And 32. 57, 32. We'll see where it goes from there. More of the wall is still being built out this way. The cobbled road is coming along nicely. Our extra houses have all been built. We're up to possible 72. And then we added this little cluster in here, which I think look awesome. Does it affect their desirability? I imagine it probably does, being right bunched up on each other, but I don't know. Maybe not. It seems to have fallen just generally in a few places. Anyway, we're going to be adding the um, the plaza here. They're going to be loving it once they get their extra stone delivered. Speaking of, it seems like we're kind of low on stone, so maybe I'll put in a harvest order here just for stone. Seeing as the uh, cart is up this way anyway. Just tell it to move somewhere about there. All right, great. Things are coming along really nicely. Our road is moving out along the lake the opposite direction. We saw that there was more fish down here before and there's herbs for medicine. We don't have a healer's house, so that'll be a bit risky. Let's just check this as well. This is still score of the butcher. He's still here for a few more days. Don't really want to do anything else with him. We're not desperate for food. It would have been good though, you know, if we ran out of food, at least he would have been there for it. How's our wagon doing, by the way? This guy's driving the wagon. Oh, nice. So we can actually check it. Uh, transporting clay. All right, the clay mines have been running already. Nice. He's bringing the clay back up to storage. I think it has to go into the stockyard, doesn't it? So it's quite a far distance. Yeah, well, there we go. Anyway, that's going to be used to build the school. And then that other building, I can't remember what it was. The healer's house, right? Yeah. And then he's just going to go back. And he's waiting for a task. Awesome. So with the clay mine there, um, these people are going to run back and forth to their houses. We could build a temporary shelter out this way. There's a lot of people living out here, and it could just get stocked with food. So this is a temporary shelter, 15 wood, can be stocked with food and supplied, allowing workers that are far from the residence to work longer before having to return home. So I'll build it a bit closer to the mine, just so that we know that that's the kind of building I wanted them to really get their food from. So the other, other people might use it too. I'll just add a road like this and see if we can join it down to make it look kind of nice. And like I said, the plan is to build a big wall around this farm and then maybe just a little fence around it just to help. I don't know. It looks like a disaster zone. <laughs> but they're almost done with the next bit. 59 and 32. That's what we're waiting on. We're out of arrows for one of the hunters, but he should be able to get some, no problem. And this is a schedule to be upgraded as well. So can we increase the amount of builders we have? Let's go up to six now. I've just noticed the time as well, man. This game totally eats your time, but we're doing good. We're up to 45, but that's going to have to be it for this episode. Um, but I'm going to basically just continue on right after this one. And then I'll be able to look at any feedback we have and implement it. But things are looking great. So we've leveled up to tier two. We've increased the amount of houses. We've increased desirability by pushing our industry further out. Nobody has died beyond Amara, I think her name was. Um, and God bless her, you know. <laughs> But then we've also got our clay mine, our farm is starting, our wall has been built. So I'm really happy with how things are coming along. So that's going to be it for this episode. Look forward to seeing the feedback on it. Again, thank you for the support in the first one, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing. And it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.